Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video we are covering CCNA semester 1, Introduction to Networks. And this is section 3.3, Data Transfer in the Network. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to explain how data encapsulation allows data to be transported across the network, and be able to explain how local hosts access local resources on the network. Message segmentation, communicating the message. Segmentation is a process of breaking communication into pieces. While we are breaking the messages into small pieces, it helps with multiplexing as well. Multiplexing means interleaving the pieces as they traverse the media. So for example, if you didn't, let me just use a pen here. If we send all this message as it is, and we don't break it into small pieces, right? Is it going through like this to the destination? Now this has to wait until all that message has gone through uh, before we can send it. If we break it into small pieces, so we can send one message from this person, extend the next message comes from this person, and the third comes this way, and fourth comes this way. This is called a multiplexing. So segmentation is a breaking into small pieces, and each piece is going to get a sequence number, so at the destination we'll be able to reassemble the messages just the way they were sent. So segmentation helps with sending uh, big messages, uh, breaking into small pieces, and that helps with multiplexing as well. Multiple pieces are labeled for ease, easy direction and reassembly. So each segment is going to get a header, like port number and destination number, as well as a sequence number. So for example, at the destination, takes all the sequences and puts them together, re reassembles them before it gives it to the application layer. Or if you think of OSI layer before it gives it to session and presentation and then application. So if we get, for example, if I send you 20 segments, and then you say, say you got 1 to 17, you're going to turn around and you can acknowledge the 18th, which means that I know that you lost three segments. You lost 18, 19, and 20, and then I will send them again. So we know we use acknowledgments that making sure that we have receive those segments. So segmenting messages allows many different conversation to be interleaved, increases the efficiency of network communication, but this does add complexity because as as we are segmenting it into small pieces, each piece is going to have it's going to behave on its own, yeah, it's going to have a headers, it's going to go take the path from source to destination. So as it gets to the destination, maybe they're not going to arrive the same way as we send them. Say we send packet one, two, three on that order. Maybe at the destination, maybe they will go packet three, just found a better path and it will go first. So the destination, they have to wait for all the segments to come in, put them on the correct order, reassemble them, and then give them to the, destiny, to the upper layers. Protocol operation, imagine this, uh, we have a web server and a web client, right? So the message is the user data. This is the good bit. This is that valuable that we actually want to send from the source to destination. If we could, we could just send that and that would be, life would be great, but we can't. So we have to add some headers. First is going to be the application layer. It's going to identify what sort of message is it. Then we add a header, TCP segment. Now it's called the segment. So the message is broken into pieces and the TCP will add its own header, like source port number, destination port number, and so on. Then we go down to, throw to the network layer the network layer is going to add the IP address, so uh, IP header, IP source, IP uh, address of destination, and so on. When it gets to this layer, this is called the packet. So here, those two, those here is just a stream, yeah. So stream, and then we call it the segment at the transport layer, and then we call it packet at the network layer. So as we go through the Ethernet, Ethernet now is called a frame, yeah. So a frame, we just make sure that it's a frame. Ethernet layer, Ethernet layer, no, data link layer, data link layer is going to add Ethernet like a MAC address source, a MAC address, a physical address of the destination. And as well as it's going to add the frame check sequence. This is the frame check sequence. So as the data goes to the destination, the first thing the destination is going to look is going to make sure that this, this packet has not been corrupted, right? So it's going to check the frame check sequence. If that's all fine, it's going to remove well, look at the MAC address, find out that it's for itself. Could be unicast, multicast, or broadcast. Find out for itself, then it looks at the IP address. If it's for itself, it's going to strip that as well. And then look at the 
TCP. TCP layer is going to find out, okay, well, oh, sorry, the, the transport layer. For example, it's going to look at the port numbers, destination, source port number, and so on. Then HTTP. Then we got to the data that we actually did want to send it. That's called a good put. That's the data that we actually we want to send. So the protocol data unit, it's used to describe a piece of data at any layer of network in red model. So encapsulation is a process of it's going down through the layers. De-encapsulation is when you actually unpack the packages. So first we have a data or stream. Then uh, the transport layer, we call it a segment. So as you can see here, for example, so first here we have just a data. At the transport layer, we take one data and we just split it in small pieces. And that is called the segment now. Each piece is going to have a transport header. So the closest header to the data is the transport header. Then we go to the network layer. The network layer is going to add its own header. And then we have the ethernet frame, ethernet or frame header. This is data link layer. Yeah? So it puts a MAC address, source MAC address, destination MAC address, what type of it is the IP and so on. And then it puts a frame trailer as well, making sure that, okay, frame check sequence. So at the destination, you can find out that it has not been corrupted on the path. So here we have a uh, upper layers, the identification of what application is it. Then we have a layer next to it. It's going to add its own header. I keep saying these, yeah, there's destination, source, port numbers. Then the network layer will add the destination and source logical network addresses. The IP address is considered logical address because you can change it today. If you are in London, you'll have a different IP address. If you're in Paris, you'll have a different IP address. Say if you're visiting with your laptop. Then we have a data link layer. Data link layer adds the source and destination IP or MAC address. These are called physical addresses because these addresses they do not, you cannot change. You can spoof them, but you can't change them. And then the physical layer, it deals with timing and synchronization bits. So network addresses, layer three. So when we put the address, for example, say uh, this PC is 192.168.1.110, it puts the source address there now. And destination address, it puts the destination address there, 172.16.1.99, this. This information or layer three information does not get manipulated. It does not get changed from the source to destination, unless you are going from private network to public network, which is NAT will change this. But remember, layer three information doesn't get changed from the source to destination. While layer two will get changed, we'll see a slide very soon. Network address is a source IP address and destination IP address. And it's responsible for delivering the IP packets from the original source to the final destination, either on the same network or to remote network. Data link address is a source data link address and destination data link address. It's responsible for delivering the data link frame from one network interface card to another network interface card on the same network. Yeah, so data link talks about the same network. So for example, devices on the same network. So this PC wants to talk to uh, 192.168.110. Yeah, this PC, this is the source, which is this PC here. Yep. And it would like to talk to 192.168.1.9. Um, okay, they are talking on the same network. Yeah, so this is, a, this is the network. If it's on the same network, 192.168.1.9, which is this one here, that's that one there, that piece. Now it will put the, the MAC address of the device on the network. So it will, what it will do, say that he wants to talk to 192.168.1.9. He needs to fill this. He puts his own source address, source MAC address, which is fine. He's got that on the memory. Now the next thing is gonna put the destination MAC address. This information is gonna dynamically resolve. This is gonna send an op address resolution, if I can write it here, yeah. So for, forget this, address resolution protocol, op, it says, okay, who's got this address? Can you please tell me? 192.168.1.9. And this device, this server is going to reply. It's going to say, yep, it's me. Then it will put it there. If they are talking to the remote network, for example, this PC again, very chatty PC, with this IP address, right? So that's the source, source network. Oh, sorry, source IP address. And it's chatting to this web server, 99. So say, say this uh, web server is 199 here. You can see that. 
Now, because this PC no finds out that it knows that this web server is not on the local network, the source is obviously it's going to be himself. That's the source MAC address. But the destination MAC address is not going to put the web server's destination MAC address. It's going to up or send address resolution protocol toward the default gateway, which is in this case is all 1111. That's a default gateway MAC address because it needs to send it there. As it's going through this information destination and source mac addresses does get changed from the source the destination gets changed this router will put his own as a source this information sorry you will go there and this information will get there all right sorry about the mess here in the screen thank you very much for watching my video and hopefully to see you in the future videos and please don't forget to subscribe bye bye